My name is Emmanuel Lagarig. I'm, I'm in charge of strategy for uh, Schneider Electric, uh, one of the uh, big European industrial companies, 25 billion euros revenue, 160,000 people across the world. Um, um, and, and what we do for a living is uh, uh, power management and, and automation for data centers, buildings, homes, and industry. Um, and, and at the risk of uh, being a bit boring, uh, I will probably repeat in my, in my argument a lot of the points that, that uh, Stefan just, uh, just uh, shared with you, probably with a different angle. But that's, uh, uh, well, that's probably not the, the last time you, this year you hear, uh, you see a German and a Frenchman agreeing in Brussels. That's, uh, <laughs> especially if one of them is called Emmanuel, that's, that's a good start. Um, so starting from, from the comment Stefan made on, on, on the, the, the statement of, uh, of, uh, of Schwab from, uh, from uh, the, the World Economic Forum. Um, yes, there is, this fourth industrial revolution is not going to happen. It has happened already. Um, uh, we live in the digital age, in the digital era, right? So, so uh, data is the new oil, data is the new currency. Uh, there was a very good uh, report in the Economist magazine on, you know, I think it was in May uh, of this year. Um, so, but you can be sure that if something uh, shows up on the cover of the Economist, is, that means it has happened already, uh, uh, right? It's not, uh, it's not new. And, and yes, it's a big industrial revolution. It's a big revolution. Uh, comparable to the first industrial revolution, uh, um, that brought the age of, uh, of steel and, and, and coal. Um, uh, com compared with, and, and similar to, to, to the second and the third revolution where you had oil and, and mass manufacturing uh, as we know it today as, as the, main, the, the main drivers uh, of those revolution. Uh, just, just take a, one data point. Um, in the first industrial revolution, right, 120, 130 years ago, uh, which were the largest companies in the world by market capitalization? Which were the, 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 the big ones? Thyssen, uh, Vanderbilt, uh, all, all, all the big uh, coal miners and, 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 and transformers uh, uh, in, in Europe or, or, or in North America. Um, um, these were the dominant companies at that time. And then if you go to the second age of, uh, of industry, the age of oil and, and mass manufacturing, well, the dominant players were the likes of uh, Shell, Exxon, General Motors, GE, Siemens, um, companies like this. Now just look at the, the ranking of the, the, the largest companies by market capitalization. Just take the, the first 10, right? Uh, 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 and it goes Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, in that order. So, so it has happened already. Uh, it's not like it's going to happen, and there's, and the magnitude of that change is is, is so big that that um, mm, there is not much to do to, to, to catch up. It's a, pity, it's a pity that there's no European company there uh, because the next one in that table, if you go down, would be Chinese companies, Alibaba and Tencent, ranking number seven, number eight. But that's okay. Um, um, and, and I don't think, frankly speaking, when it comes to to building the ecosystem and the the operating system actually for, for Industry 4.0 um, will see anytime soon a European, unless uh, um, really the, the regulator in the US starts doing something about those, those behemoths and start, we start seeing about things about breakups of companies and things like that. So not, not, not probably going to happen anytime soon, but that's okay. Um, the, uh, the operating system of cloud computing and, and the infrastructure for, Lying behind uh, um, Industry 4.0 will be owned by Amazon and, and Microsoft. That's okay. That's just the operating system. We have accepted that also for our, PC, for our PCs. Uh, the operating system has been is made by, by those same companies, by the way, um, uh, or for, for our phones. But, but that's not where the, the problem is, and that's not where the opportunity is for, for Europe. Um, the opportunity for Europe in that uh, transformation of industry in this Industry 4.0 uh, uh, paradigm is, is in the specific knowledge of the technologies and the processes. And this is something that uh, you, where you find distinctive competencies and unique competencies and technologies in Europe. 
uh, that you don't find in the US, that you don't find in China. You may find them in Japan uh, uh, to some extent. So this is where the strength of Europe uh, is, and this is where the opportunity is. Um, and of course, um, it, it's about software, it's about digital services, uh, it's about transforming the knowledge many of the SMEs in Europe uh, have around, around industrial processes or industrial machines um, into digital services and making that, and using that ecosystem of, of platforms uh, to make them strong uh, uh, in Europe and outside of Europe. And of course, in that regard, if we continue um, measuring the success of industrial policies in uh, tons of uh, steel or, or, or number of cars we export or number of, uh, of people working on, a, on an assembly line, um, no, we won't get there because yes, the, this, is, this is not probably where the value would be created. Uh, think about it. Um, think about who are the largest um, companies um, in industrial software uh, today. Um, Dassault, Siemens, uh, Hexagon, um, now Schneider Electric, thanks to the acquisition of a, a UK company a, a few days ago. Um, um, all European. Um, there are a couple of uh, uh, U.S. names uh, uh, like Autodesk and NCS in that, in that league also, but not as, as dominant as the European, not as specialized as the, 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 the European. And those European companies uh, are ruling the world when it comes to the specialization, when it comes to the deep knowledge of a process. Uh, and this is where the, the, the opportunity is, uh, in creating um, on that base uh, um, uh, digital services. Uh, let, let me share with you um, an example, and, and it's especially relevant for SME. So we, we are working in Spain with, uh, with a machine manufacturer. Uh, they, they, they manufacture car wash machines, right? those machines that you put your car inside and it washes your car. Um, a few years ago, they, that they had a traditional industrial model, which was basically what well, they were making money out of uh, uh, making machines. Um, today it's about the machines are connected uh, and today most of their earnings and, 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 and margin is coming from the services they sell. Um, because the machine, the machine is connected, they can anticipate uh, when it's going to break down um, and, and, and send and dispatch a technician uh, on site before it breaks down uh, so that uh, the, the machine is always on. Uh, and because it's connected, they can anticipate when it will run out of shampoo and, and chemicals. Um, this is another added value for, for that company. And now, because they can sell more chemicals and more shampoos for the machines, uh, and they don't lose that part of the, of the value chain. Um, so uh, you would find across Europe, and especially around SMEs, and SMEs manufacturing machines in the north of Italy, in Spain, in the south of Germany, in Austria, um, a lot of cases like this where uh, it's not only about industrial jobs, not only about manufacturing stuff and hard stuff that you will later export uh, out of Europe, uh, it's also about digital services uh, that go together with that. This is a lot of value creation, a lot of productivity, uh, uh, and, and, and a lot of jobs that will replace, as Stefan was, was saying, the, the jobs we know today in, in the industry. Uh, um, because, yeah, that, that's, that's probably one of the biggest challenges we, we will have to face as, as as industrial companies and, and, and as governments and as, uh, and as citizens in, in Europe. Uh, there will be a big replacement. A lot of jobs will be destroyed um, and a lot of jobs will be created. Um, and, and again, um, this is normal. This is to be expected. Uh, we, we are in a, in a, in a revolution uh, comparable to the ones we, we knew 120 years ago when a lot of agricultural jobs were destroyed and a lot of industrial jobs were created in the cities and people m migrated from the countryside to the cities. Um, that was traumatic at that time. Uh, um, so if we are, and if we are not careful and if we are too short-sighted, uh, of course, the, the first thing we will get is more Brexit and more Trumps and more, and more things like, like, like this. If we don't understand that, uh, yes, there is a transition we need to manage and this is the, the key point, uh, to make sure that we manage that transition as successfully as we can. Uh, and another comparison would be the, the, um, the disruption that the, the car brought, right? So, so um, th th that was a pretty fast disruption, right? So in 1900, 
uh, uh, at the very beginning of the last century, there was barely no car. And, and 15 years later, later uh, cars were the dominant uh, uh, transportation uh, uh, mode in, in, in cities. Um, well, uh, a lot of uh, uh, blacksmiths uh, lost their job. Um, so if you were measuring just the, uh, the jobs around the, the ecosystem of, uh, of uh, breeding and maintaining horses as, as the, the indicator of the, the health of the transportation industry, well, you were probably wrong. Uh, because cars not only brought uh, new jobs, and then we had to manufacture the, the cars, but they also changed the cities and changed the way we, we live and, 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 and work everywhere in the world. So this is similar. Um, um, again, let's not think about uh, uh, measuring the success of industrial policies in, in tons of steel and number of cars uh, and, and, and number of jobs in, in assembly lines. That's not uh, uh, going to make it. Uh, there will be a lot of value created in digital services associated to industry. And again, Europe has a unique skill, a unique advantage there, um, uh, more, more than, than anything. Um, now, um, so big challenge and, and big question to solve on the transition uh, uh, and, and the, the reskilling of, uh, of, of, uh, of Europeans uh, towards those new jobs that, that uh, Stefan was, um, was, was, was mentioning. Um, the, the other topic we will have to address altogether is, is about probably um, data. Um, just. Um, Take, take the example of, uh, well, let's take the example of the refrigerator that, that, uh, that uh, Stefan uh, mentioned. Just imagine that you are uh, an industrial manufacturer of refrigerator. You sell refrigerator for a living. Um, and now all of a sudden your refrigerator is connected. And it's an IoT, so it's connected to the internet and it can count the number of tomatoes and the number of uh, the bottles of milk and, uh, and you have in your, in your, uh, in your fridge and can measure even the level of the mayonnaise uh, bottle, right? So in, here in Belgium, uh, people love to, uh, to, to dip their Belgian fries in, in, in mayonnaise. So it's interesting if, because your fridge is able to measure the level of your mayonnaise uh, bottle, that, well, it can be replenished automatically. That's when it's below 10%, send a signal to your grocery store, to your supermarket, and then a new bottle shows up. Right, um, and actually, if you are the fridge manufacturer, uh, this information may have a lot of value. Uh, uh, sharing the information of what's in in your fridge um, is um, may have a lot of value for Tesco, Carrefour, uh, um, Aldi, and uh, you, you, you name it. Uh, to the point that those guys, the, the, the retailers, the, the supermarkets, would be ready even to pay for your fridge. Right. So, as a consumer, yes, you would have to share the data of. Uh, of what's in your fringe and what you're eating and what your family is eating, but, but in exchange you may have a, a, a free fridge uh, and that, that replenishes itself automatically. So that's probably a good deal uh, um, uh, for you. Uh, just like we all enjoy uh, sharing our personal information and, and having a, a free map service on our, on, our, on our phones, well, that's probably the kind of the same uh, uh, deal we will, we will have. Now, if you're the, 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 the fridge manufacturer, um, well, you, you want to retain that value uh, of reselling the data of what's in the fridge to, uh, to Tesco or, or Carrefour. Um, otherwise, um, well, basically your fridge will become a commodity and, and someone will, will replace you importing fridges from, from wherever in China or in Korea. Uh, and, um, and, and, you will, and basically your business will go away. Um, so all this to say that um, the regulation around ownership of data uh, uh, will be especially uh, uh, critical uh, to make sure that those new digital industrial services uh, um, are successful in Europe and create those jobs and use new, new jobs in, 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 in Europe. Uh, and let's make no mistake, so trying to apply the same models as the ones we have in, 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 uh, in B2C, in business to consumers, will probably uh, not be the solution. Uh, the first thing that we do probably is to destroy job, more jobs in Europe and send them to China and, 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 and the U.S. So we have to, to protect those, especially those SMEs, again, in the south of Germany, north, north of Italy, in Austria, in Spain, you know, we, where you have real unique uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, and, and yes, there will be, um, 
th there will be interesting uh, cases. Right? So just imagine a, uh, a German packaging machine manufacturer who is selling machines to a, to a fulfillment center of, of Amazon. Um, right? So who is the owner of the data of the operating data of the machine, the German manufacturer or Amazon. All right, so that, that, we will have interesting cases, not, not easy to solve, uh, but definitely the, the, that, that will be a, a, a make or break. Same for cybersecurity. The cybersecurity in industrial environments has nothing to do with cybersecurity in IT, so let's not try to apply the same formula and, and rules uh, to, to industrial, uh, industry 4.0 as the ones we try to, to apply to general IT because that, that could be also a failure and a risk of value destruction um, um, in, in Europe. So, uh, again, we are very optimistic uh, 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 for Europe. Uh, let's not think that, that the problem to solve is to, to build the next big platform or ecosystem or, or, or operating system for, for the Internet of Things. That's not the point. This, the, the point is about the knowledge of specific industrial processes. This is unique in Europe, uh, where nobody can compete with European companies and where some European SMEs have a unique advantage in the world. And based on that knowledge and those skills, and, and, those, uh, and, and some of them are software skills, uh, there is a huge opportunity to create more value, more industrial jobs. They will be different than, than the ones we know today uh, uh, in, in Europe, and a unique competitive advantage uh, for, for the region. Thank you.